My name is John Armstrong. I'm a reader in financial mathematics at King's. And so one of my roles in the department is I'm the director of programs. And I've got to think about the education of all of our students. And so issues about diversity and inclusion are very important to me. In my job, I would had to look at the proposals for from the Quality Assurance Association for Higher Education, who had issued a new statement that they were proposing that all maths departments should teach maths from a decolonized point of view. And I, I was very concerned about that because I, I know the um, theory of decoloniality and it's a postmodern theory. So and postmodernism, in my view, is just completely anti-science, anti-rationality. And the background of it is, 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 for example, there's a Peruvian sociologist called Quijano who came up with the program of decoloniality. And he sees rationality as a European construct that's being imposed um, upon the rest of the world to promote imperialism and capitalism. And I, I really don't think that most mathematicians um, want to be involved in that program, I think they support rationality. And so um, I organized a letter about this, an open letter, um, where I managed to get a number of people to sign it. So I focused on people in my department. I focused on people of color in my department. I really encouraged them to sign. We're all anti-racist. No, nobody wants discrimination. And I also tried to get some big names. And we got, I think, seven. I think it was seven fellows of the Royal Society. Um, to sign it, and so so that that, that was just as we we sent that to the Quality Assurance Association, and they didn't quite ignore it, and they they did they no longer require that people teach maths from a decolonized point of view, but they still are asking us to teach that some mathematicians were Nazis, and they're asking us to teach us that some of the founders of statistics were into eugenics, but they're not asking us to look at the other side. They're not asking us to talk about Jewish mathematicians like Emmy Noether or um, Hausdorff who um, committed suicide rather than going to a concentration camp. I think there's a huge issue in education. Frankly, there's a lot of people in arts and humanities who are pushing very politically motivated ideas. Um, who are following postmodern philosophies that I, I find quite objectionable. And they're quite happy, I think, to um, indoctrinate. So there's a movement in education of critical pedagogy, which sees the purpose of education as being um, to promote social justice. And it's always a very particular form of social justice that's promoted. I mean, obviously, we're all in favour of social justice, but it's the social justice that thinks that we should decolonize the curriculum and that maths is racist, it's that kind of social justice. Um, and so I'm very concerned that we're getting an increasing amount of indoctrination put in our curricula. And I'm concerned that scientists might be letting that happen to their students by just being willing to say, okay, yeah, we'll let the um, We'll let that department put on an EDI module that's compulsory for all students. Um, we we did have a module at King's, which was called the um, King's First Year Gateway to King's. And it was intended that it would be given to all students. The pilot was unsuccessful. I'm really pleased to say that it isn't going to be given to all students. But it covered various postmodern ideas um, without any questioning. It, it discussed critical pedagogy as though it was the only right way to do education. It said that all students should develop a critical consciousness, which means that they should believe that the purpose of their education is um, social justice. And it was, you know, to me, quite astonishing, politically biased stuff. And so to me, that's my real concern as somebody in mathematics. Um, I think it's the education that we need to be worried about. So I was approached by the UK Athletes Commission. They asked me if I'd be able to do a survey on attitudes to um, 
uh, attitudes about trans participation in sports. And I, th th they were keen to talk to elite athletes because it's a real concern for them that elite athletes have never been consulted, still haven't been consulted in the formation of policy on um, trans participation. So I put together a um, research ethics application, um, which you have to do in order to be allowed to publish your research um, in journals, that is. And um, it came back um, and I, I was told that I had to reframe the um, application. And it was because it said that by saying I wanted to consult on attitudes to male participation in the female category, I was misgendering people. And um, what I was doing was unacceptable. I had to consult with the EDI team. They weren't objecting to the phrasing of the question. It was the phrasing of the research proposal, using the word male in that. Um, and so that's something that's still ongoing. And um, so it's, I think, about 15 months later, perhaps a little more, and it's still still not resolved. Obviously, we haven't been able to conduct the research. Things have moved on. So the, the idea of doing the research is completely useless now. And so it's a big concern for me that research ethics is able to block effectively research that they don't like. They can, they can come up with almost any excuse they want to stop you doing things and just create whatever bureaucracy they like to, to, to prevent research. Yes, I think the biggest problem is that research ethics committees are subtly altering research. So I'm a mathematician and it is not going to change my career if I cannot do a survey into trans participation in sports in exactly the way that I want to. Um, if it was a more significant part of my career, then I would have to change the wording. I'd have to really do what the Research Ethics Committee wanted other, because I can't sit there 15 months refusing to do any research. Um, so I think what's happening is people are changing the questions or they're just avoiding the area entirely. So you can see this, I think, in the um, CAS review on transgender health. I think people have just entirely avoided looking at um, transgender health for young people just because they know they can't get published. They won't be able to get it through research ethics committees. It's um, just not worth looking at that area. And I, th I think that's a huge concern. The article is about the Athena Swan scheme. And the Athena Swan scheme was originally designed to improve the position of women in science and mathematics, STEM subjects. And it actually focused on women in leadership positions. So that was its initial remit. I think everybody agrees with the goal of um, ensuring that women are properly represented in science. I, I'm hugely behind that goal. And I actually think Athena Swan, when it started out, was ahead of its time. It was an excellent scheme. I've done quite an extensive literature review of Athena Swan and I've analysed their policy documents. In fact, there are quite a few issues um, that come up, particularly um, a relevant one here would be around academic freedom. At one point, they were requiring that... Um, all university departments um, foster a collective understanding that people have a right to determine their own gender identity. Well, it's hard to know exactly what that's meant to me. Um, but the idea that universities should be fostering a collective understanding is problematic because universities should be places where things are questioned and things are debated. So I was very concerned about this, and I did the literature review. And during the course of the literature review, I read a paper that was looking at um, the number of women in senior leadership roles and how that changed amongst Athena Swan members. And I noticed, because I'm a mathematician um, and I spot these things, that there was some statistical flaws in the paper. What they've done is they've basically plotted the portion of women in senior roles over time, and they measured the slope. So for silver awards, it was, say, like that. 
And for people with bronze awards, it's like that. And they went, well, because the slope's different, that means that you're getting a better rate of improvement if you've got a silver award than if you've got a bronze award. But, but the problem with that analysis is it forgets that people are moving from bronze through to silver over time. And so what they were actually showing was just really that the composition of Athena Swan was changing. So when you redid the analysis with that, taking that into account, things looked a bit different. The real shocking thing I think about Athena Swan is that silver award holders for Athena Swan have less women in senior leadership roles than bronze Athena Swan award holders. And they've got less women in senior roles than people who don't get an award. And then you get most women with senior roles in places that have got no interest in Athena Swan at all. And that's why as people move from bronze to silver, um, what's happening is that people used to have a bronze award, they go into silver, and that makes all the silver award holders have a better proportion of women because it's people who, who have higher proportion of women are just moving into the silver category. So it, these two statistical flaws in the original analysis, um, they were giving the impression that Athena Swan was achieving something magical um, and really improving women's positions. And unfortunately, I mean, <laughs> I really wish it was doing that. But it's not magical. It would be it would be astonishing if it was doing what that paper claimed. And when we redid the analysis, we found um, that that wasn't happening. And anyway, I submitted the paper to BMJ Open, and they'd published the original paper on the topic. Um, and we got some very favourable reviews back. So there were four reviewers. Three of them, I would say, were basically extremely positive. One was negative, and um, they rec the, the journal recommended rejection. And that's really unusual um, to get three. You, know, you usually go with the majority view, I would say. We um, appealed, and eventually they let us resubmit with major revisions. And after very long delays, we got back uh, um, the um, all, all four reviewers now appeared to be happy. So three had no objections at all. And one was asking for a few tweaks to the language because they felt that um, it was perhaps hard for readers of the medical journal to understand. And we made, made some tweaks to the language and then it was rejected um, outright with no appeal by the editor. So I submitted a subject access request because I was very suspicious. And it's a math, it's fundamentally a statistical paper. I think it's essentially inarguable. You don't um, reject such a paper normally um, when four reviewers are saying accept. And I found out via a subject access request that his view had been colored by my Twitter feed, which is gender critical and it opposes decolonization of mathematics. And it's very clear in these views and um well that to me just completely unacceptable i was accept expecting um blind peer review and um, we simply didn't get that i think there's a wider concern that it seems to be accepted now that um it's okay to interfere politically in academic research it's okay to reject a paper because you don't like the politics of the author. It's okay to, when you educate students, only give one political side. And if we allow that to become normalized, then everything's up for grabs. Any part of science um, could be affected next. It's very hard to predict. I don't think 10 years ago, um, many people would have guessed that um, I would be sat here talking about how I wasn't able to use the word male um, in research about sports. I would never have predicted this. So who knows? If if we don't maintain our standards, if we don't um, continue to allow people to talk freely, to debate freely, and to judge science on its merits, then the moment you drop those things, it ceases to be science and anything might happen.